my experience in the prophetic part three in the part one we saw my experience in growing up in the prophetic and i spent time talking about how growing up in the prophetic was and the encounter i had through a dream where a man came to me and uh, instructed me to follow him outside and that it was raining outside that i objected and this man find a way to pull me into the rain and said that the mantle has been passed on to me and that took me to another dimension of the prophetic in part 2 i ended with number 12 my experience in handling senior prophet attacking my ministry one of the things i have come to know is that no matter how anointed you are no matter how careful you are no matter how disciplined you are suddenly uh, whether you like it or not certain people will fight you will not agree with you and i spoke about about two or three of the senior prophets i met and how they attacked my ministry we are beginning the part three and the part three we started from number 11 my experience in prophesying when prophecy is delayed i mean there have been several times where god have caused me to speak prophetically into the life of people and they look as if whatever god said about their life has been delayed but one of the things i always want people to understand is that every genuine word from god will try you every genuine word from god will test you every genuine word from god will go through process now many people are not ready to go through the process that it will take them for manifestation prophecy has different natures the first nature of a prophetic word is the nature of the source and god is the source of every prophetic word the second nature of every prophetic word is the nature of revelation every prophetic word comes as a revelation now the third nature is the nature of interpretation and clarity now when you receive a prophetic word you will need to have understanding you need to have clarity the fourth nature has to do with the nature of application now this is what many people miss so for example when god uses me to speak into the life of a couple desiring for the seed of the womb and the law says that they are going to be pregnant they need to learn the nature of application yes god have spoken i have declared what god have said but if they don't do their part they will not see god's part they need to go and do what pregnant women do to be pregnant so they can see their pregnancy now many people have not been taught that there are two aspects to every prophetic word the god word aspect and the man word aspect the god word aspect is sure the man word aspect is not sure now it is the man word aspect the man needs to be involved in what he must do to see his prophetic word coming to pass when someone receives a prophetic word and the lord says that uh, i'm going to make you a medical doctor there is responsibility impacted or imputed on the person that um, he should go to medical school and not to go to law school if this person by decision decide to go to law school he will not become what the prophetic word said you become so whenever i had issues with people who have received delayed prophecy i made them to understand what they are supposed to do as long as i heard the voice of god and i declared the part of god i don't get worried i know that as long as god have spoken his word will come to pass number 12 my experience in dealing with difficult prophetic movements and how i handled them yet there have been difficult prophetic movements 
where through what God has called you to do, you find yourself in a very unpleasant, unpleasant, unpleasant situation. I mean, remember years ago when I ministered to somebody and they misinterpreted what I said. The next thing was that I was arrested and the police have to take me uh, uh, to the police station and have to be behind bars. And some of these experiences are not the best, but as long as God is with that, everything begins to work in the way that it must work. There have been moments where you thought that you have heard the word of God well, and well, but the interpretation becomes the issue. So there have been difficult prophetic moments. Example, when you are preparing for a major prophetic conference that has been advertised everywhere, and suddenly you don't hear anything, you don't see anything, you get to the conference, and it's like, I mean, you have never prophesied before. In seasons or times like this, I make sure I just teach the word and I leave. Because I'm not there to please or impress God. I'm there to say what God is saying. So in those moments where it looks as if God is silent, I concentrate to do what God has called me to do. Number 13. My experience with sons and daughters in ministry, leaving the ministry in the wrong way. Well, I have come to the conclusion that no matter what you do, uh, people will leave you. Now, when people leave you, protect your heart so you don't become bitter, you don't become offended, and you don't catch them. Whether they leave in a good way or a bad way, make sure you don't catch them. So I've had some men and women I have trained over the years, and at some point, they decide to leave, and most of them left in the bad way. What did I do? When they left in the bad way, I made sure I learned from that experience. I made sure I, I protected my heart so I did not become better, bitter. I made sure I did not see the people around me. Their, their departure did not affect the people who were there. Because those who, who are with us are more than those who leave us. So my concentration is not on those who leave us, but my concentration are those who are with us. So whether they left in a good way or a bad way, I wish them well. If they still want to remain in constant touch with me, my doors are open. If they don't, I, I mean, I'm a Christian. So my experience with sons and daughters in ministry who left the ministry in the wrong way. I wish them well. I pray for them in case I should meet them anywhere. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to talk to them. Number 14, my experience as a guest prophet in another ministry. Well, when I'm invited into any ministry, whether within the city, I am in outside the city or outside of my nation, there are certain protocols that are meant to be observed. Now I've done this thing so that I will not continue to suffer abuse. When we started ministry, we went through all kinds of things and um, I mean people began to abuse us so we needed to put certain structures in place. My first responsibility as a guest speaker in any ministry dream is to project Jesus Christ, is to let the people see Jesus Christ, is to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus. My second responsibility is to strengthen the ministry of the host and make the voice of the host more powerful than I met. The third responsibility is to bring people into a dimension of breakthrough where through my life and my ministry they'll be blessed. So when I am invited as a guest I am not there to make friends. I am not there to look for, 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 for who to connect with. I am just there to preach. I did not come as a tourist. I came as a guest speaker. So I speak the word of God and I leave. So when people invite me, they make sure they send me an email through uh, um, a prophet. Bernard L. Bernard at gmail.com. We respond, and all things being equal, determined depending on our level of relationship, we send you a certain information that state the kind of hotel I will sleep in, uh, the kind of if I'm traveling outside Ghana. I mean, I mean, um, I'm, 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 uh, the, the, what I, I'm going to be in business class or economy, and and I also talk about my expectation and the number of people I, I'm, I'm coming with. Yeah, so I will continue that later on. Maybe I'll talk about my experience with itinerant ministry, how people have treated me. Number 15, my experience with colleagues pastors. 
and the role my relations with them has helped me develop my gift. I remember when God called me very early. There are two men of God I mentioned at this stage. One is one of my friend. He is a pastor with Lighthouse Chapel International in Takradi, Reverend Raymond Sego. Reverend Raymond Sego was the first uh, man of God who introduced me into my preaching and teaching ministry. When I became born again, we used to go to places to minister, and I would be holding Bible for this great man of God. And I remember one day after we were done ministration, he told me that the following week I will be the one to preach the word of God, and I was finding every way to run away from that responsibility. But then uh, he find a way to get me back to it, then at time and at another time he introduced me to preach the word of God and that's how my preaching ministry started through the help of um, Reverend Raymond Sego and I thank God for his life then I'll talk about another friend called Apostle Joshua Emisa I mean when I was at the university we used to have a, a, a group on campus called University Christian Fellowship it was a fellowship on the University of Ghana campus and at the same time the coordinating body of all the churches, ministries and fellowship on campus and he was the president. That means that he had a lot of people responding to him and, and God used my relationship with him to open a lot of doors for me on the campus when my ministry was accepted because of him and also God used him to open some doors outside uh, um, campus for me and my journey to Tamale where I eventually started ministry he played a vital role and I believe that these two men of God have, my, have played important roles in my life that have helped me to develop my gift number 16 my experience with seductive manipulators my experience with seductive manipulators a seductive um, manipulator um, is someone who uses his relationship with you to manipulate and take advantage of, of, of people. And I have come close to people like that who came into my life and, and they began to behave as if that they were with me, but they were seductive manipulators. They used their charm, they used their position, they, they used their words they, and, and, and to, to be able to win the heart of people and later began to paint as black. Now, when I saw some of these seductive manipulators, I dealt with them because um, I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm a shepherd. A shepherd means that I take care of sheep. Now, no one will love to lose his sheep except you are selling the sheep, except you are killing the sheep, or except the sheep die. Jesus gave a parable that if a man had 100 sheep and one get missing, he will leave the 99 and look for them. So when I got some of these seductive manipulators in my ministry, I faced them head on. I talked about them. I dealt with them on personal level. And there was an extent I had to tell one of them to leave the church, not to leave Christ. I mean, uh, cast out the corner and contention shall cease. So I asked him to leave the church, but not to leave Christ. And I know he's doing well as a Christian, but he's not part of the ministry God has called me to be. Number 17, my experience with prophecies concerning nations. I mean, when you go to YouTube, you will find some of prophecies I gave concerning um, Spain, concerning Italy, who was going to become their president or prime minister. You'll find concerning Mexico. You'll find concerning Cote d'Ivoire and things like that. That. But 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 this this area has really taught me a very difficult lesson, and I think I have recovered from it. So I have experience where God speaks to me concerning nation, concerning individuals, and things like that. And yeah, that's my experience. Well, eighteen. Uh, my experience with obeying God as a prophet. Even when those instructions never made sense. I mean, like when God told me um, 13 years ago that don't travel outside Africa for for 16 years, till now it doesn't make sense to me. But I realized that in order to work with God, it must not make sense. I mean, you just have to obey. If you have a phone, uh, the operator of, of, of the manufacturer of that phone says that you need to get a SIM card or a chip. And when you get the chip, you need 
to have credit on it. You cannot violate the instructions of the manufacturer and be able to use your mobile phone effectively. So I believe that even though some of the instructions that God has given to me uh, never made sense and, 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 and from the human point of view, but over the years, those instructions have made sense. And I believe it's far better to trust God and to obey Him than to disobey Him. Number 19, my experience with expectations and demands from the congregation. Well, I, I believe that in every congregation, when a prophet comes around, they expect you to prophesy. But then I have been in meetings where God never gave me a word, where I did not see any vision, I did not hear anything, and these people wanted to put pressure on me to prophesy. I made sure I don't uh, succumb to the pressure of the people. If God asks me to prophesy, I prophesy. If there is no prophetic word, I close the meeting, we pray, I leave. My experience um, with congregational people who have not embraced or never experienced the prophetic ministry before. Yes, I've met a, a lot of people who don't know anything about the prophetic and who have never experienced the prophetic. I remember a particular time when I was invited to a very big church. And when I got there, the man of God had to tell me, the man of God, you know, we know you are a prophet and we hear you prophesy. But all that we want you to do is to teach the word of God and don't prophesy. I said, okay. Now, now, whilst I was teaching the word of God, the Lord gave me a word. And and, and, and I did not know how to go about it. But, but I saw that the angel of the Lord was leading me to a place. And there was a word for this senior man of God who had asked me to, not to prophesy. So I told the man of God, I want to tell him something. Something. Instead of saying, I want to prophesy. And I said, well, you have a daughter and your daughter has tried getting married for this number of times. And every time he tried getting married, I mean, when it's some few weeks or months to the wedding, something happened and they call the marriage off. And I said, even as we are talking, coming Saturday, your daughter is supposed to get married. But I see that last night, your daughter and the beloved or the fiancé had a problem. And because of the problem, the guy have told your daughter that he would not marry. So as I'm talking, the guy is on his way even to the church. By the time I was done talking, the guy entered and the guy confirmed everything and the Lord had to say that they are going to get married. By the time I was done ministering to this man of God, he said, man of God, keep on prophesying. Keep on prophesying. So I've had a lot of experience with people who, who, who don't accept the prophetic. Now some don't accept the prophetic because of wrong teaching. Some don't accept the prophet because of certain people who came in as prophet and who were never. Some don't accept, accept the prophetic because of prophet who did not handle themselves and the prophetic gave very well. Some don't accept the prophetic because of certain bad experiences they had with the prophetic. Prophet entered into their church, into their family, and suddenly family started breaking. There were issues here and there. But I need people to understand that no matter who experience with the prophetic, the prophetic ministry of the office of the prophet is an authentic ministry in the New Testament. If you, your, your sibling or your friend or your relative die in a car accident, you don't say that you are going to go on a journey that takes four hours where there's no airline. You won't say that you will not take her, you are going to walk. So no matter your negative experience with the prophetic, open to it. And so with this experience, I also spend time to teach people about the prophetic so that they can be open to the prophetic. Number 21, my experience with rebellious sons and daughters. These have had men and women have raised in ministry who at one point or other rebelled. And I believe that the rebel, you know, rebellion can come because of certain uh, um, um, issues with the leader and with his character. People can rebel because, I mean, someone might have sown bad seeds to them. But, but, but with me, no matter whichever reason for people rebelling, I make sure as long as I raise you, I don't fight you. I don't curse you. In case you want to fight me, then I'm ready for that battle. I will not fight, but I know how people fight for me. Number 21, my experience with people who are before and after they are broken through. You know, I've had certain strange experience in this area. You, you meet people 
who wanted political powers and, and the way they used to treat you. And suddenly, God, through your ministry and other direction, mentorship and other things, they get breakthrough. And by the time they get to where they're supposed to get to, their character seems to change. You have also had experience with people who, I mean, I, I mean, were looking for anointing. And by the time they became anointed, they begin to change. And you are people, no matter whatever the Lord do with them, they were poor. God turned their life around, turned their business around. They were looking for children. God gave them children, they were looking God gave them, and still they are committed to the cause of Christ, very devoted to God, very devoted to the things of God, and very committed to you. I believe until you have come to a dimension where the things that happen to you cannot change who you are, that you have not started life yet. Remember this prophetic faculty with Prophet Bernard L. Bernard Nelson Ishin.